Jackie with Intoxicating Arts and this is the card that we're going to be making today and I'm starting off by running my Donna Salazar Rose Creations die set from Spellbinders through my Big Shot and I'm just going to run this through a bunch of times to fill up a full piece of paper. It's probably a six inch by I'm not sure what other length. Um, it doesn't really matter. You just basically need to end up with two flowers in the end. A larger one and a smaller one if you're wanting to make this exact card. I ended up having enough to make a total of three flowers and I did make all of them because I will just put the other one aside for a further project. So it's nice to kind of just do these when you have all of your stuff out because they're kind of time consuming um, but they can be fun if you're in the right mood <laughs> and right now I'm just going through and figuring out how many of each size flower I have and I did cut these out on some nice thick 140 pound watercolor cardstock and I'm just sorting them out on my Ranger nonstick craft mat figuring out what I have here and then I'll start spraying them with these Adirondack color wash sprays and I have the color purple twilight and wild plum these are actually originally meant for well it says it's for paper fabric and more but I think they were mostly marketed towards fabric but they do work great on paper they're a very highly concentrated color so I've had these for a while and I don't use them all the time but um, it's like I've barely made a dent in them because they're super saturated color and I don't think these are really available anymore, but you can get something very similar, which would be the Dilutions ink sprays. The whole point of these is that it's an ink spray, it's a nice fine mist, and it's not a mica spray, so there's no shimmer in it. It's just a, a straight color. Another similar thing would be like the Lindy Stamping. They have the Flat Fabios. That would be something similar. I think those come in a jar, but... You could probably have it in a spray mist too. So anyways, I put some water down on these and my intention with that was to hopefully make the color kind of bleed, but I guess I didn't put enough water because it's still just really giving me that kind of misted look on there. And I'll end up going back in later and adding shimmer with other mediums. And I'll also be using a paintbrush later on, you'll see. Uh, just to apply some more color and really smooth it out because I wasn't really going for the misted look on these. I wanted them to be smooth. And I did also make sure that the smallest little center ones were slightly darker than the larger flowers. And you can't really notice it that much in the end. And they don't look very realistic because I didn't do any kind of shading or anything like that but I did make the tiny ones in the center larger. I also have some of the leaves cut out from these. I made sure to cut out four leaves and I'll show you in a moment here what I did for the leaves because it was completely different. So I have the Mowed Lawn Distress Stain and I'm pouncing that on the leaves and it's kind of hard to see right now but in a moment my hand will move and you'll be able to see that I'm adding some color to the leaves. You can use whatever kind of coloring medium you want, but I'm just showing you what I did to get the effects that I got. And you can see the flowers aren't done. I'm going to go back to them and put some more color on them in a moment. So the Distress Stain is kind of, uh, it's not quite as intense as the sprays. And I'm adding the Ken Oliver Color Burst in Thalo Green. And I'm just going to tap that on over this. I think I do spray, yeah, I'm going to spray a little bit of water on there first. And then I'll tap the color burst on. And then I'll spray some more water over that in a moment. And the reason I added the color burst was because I wanted it to have just a little bit more interest. I didn't want just a single flat color. And you can see kind of a little bit now that it has more interest to it. This is a clear snap smooch spritz and the color is mixed berries and these have the most intense shimmer I have ever had in any kind of spray mist like it beats everything hands down if you want crazy shimmer this is the thing to use 
The only drawback is it comes in these tiny little glass vial type things and you run out really fast. So I use them really seldomly. I have maybe like 15 of them. I love them. They always clog. <laughs> Um, but one thing about them clogging is it's kind of nice. You can actually get away with just pulling the nozzle up and then pushing it down again. You don't have to completely stop what you're doing and clean out, clean it out. It'll kind of just keep going if you force it to. So here I'm using my finger to kind of dab some color off of the mat onto the pieces, but that wasn't very effective. So I'm grabbing my Luster Mica Spray Mist in the color Hawaiian Orchid and we don't sell these as a spray mist anymore but we do sell it in the powder form and we sell the spray bottles so you can definitely make your own i love this color it's probably my favorite color from all of the colors that we have and i think we have maybe 15 i don't know i lost count <laughs> um but i'm just dipping my paintbrush in here because like i said i wanted it to be more smooth looking and i also noticed that these were really dark so i was trying to lighten it up but you'll see in the end, they end up being very dark flowers. Now that I'm done coloring those, I'm going to open up my McGill paper. I don't know what this set is exactly called, but I will make sure to link it. It's meant for exactly what I'm using it for. It's a bunch of styluses with these round balls on them, and it's meant for shaping flowers. And I'm doing this on a foam mat here. It's not the foam mat that they sell. They sell their own foam mat. But I had one um, from my old slice machine. And I always use the one that has the biggest ball on it. So if you don't want to buy the whole kit, I would recommend starting off with the one that has the big ball. And you just kind of do these circular motions to get the petals to want to curve in. And you do all the petals and then you do a circle in the middle and that really makes them get super dimensional and just want to curl in towards the center. So I'm showing you one live here and if these take me a long time to do. So I'm just going to show one and then I'm going to just flip through to the next part where they are all done. But it's, it's fun to do if you have the time for it, if you're in the mood for it. Um, it does kind of tire your hand after a while. <laughs> so I kind of wish I would have used my fiance to help me with that. He probably would have done it. <laughs> it's not too girly. I mean, you're using a tool, right? <laughs> but I wanted to show you the close up of that. My camera's kind of struggling to focus here, but um, I just wanted to show you how dimensional it gets. And these are still slightly wet when I'm doing that. And this is what it looks like when they're all done. And I'm starting to work on the leaf. The leaf was really, really wet, and that was actually working against me. They were too wet, so I do end up drying them down a little bit. Okay, so it's a new day and a new nail color, and I'm hopefully going to do the rest of this as a voiceover. I have the rest of this card figured out now that I have the flowers finished, so I wanted to show you the rest of the card live, hopefully and I will show you what I have prepared so far. So this is from the Die Cuts with a View Mariposa Mat Stack, and I'll just show you that really quick. This has been around for quite a long time, and it's just gorgeous. It's one of those stacks that I always just look at in awe because it has all this foil and glitter and the butterflies, and it's just so pretty. And I had a full sheet of this one right here and you can kind of see there's some glitter on it but I'm really frugal with my supplies when I can be which is probably why I have a ton of paper but what I did was cut it down so you can kind of see there's just these small sections of it here and then use my tape runner to adhere it to look like it's matted on there just on the top and the bottom and then this is another piece of paper from the same stack the card size is, the whole reason I did it this size is because I bought these card bases from, I think, Hobby Lobby, and they're not the normal size that I use. They are actually larger, so I did it to coordinate with that. It's a six and a half by five. So that's actually good for me today for what I'm doing because... The sentiment that I'm using is pretty big and the flowers are kind of big as well. 
So let me get the flowers out here. These are the ones that I made earlier in the video on a previous day. All I've done now is stack them up and put a little brad in between them to hold it together. And I also have the leaves that I made. So I'm gonna bring those over. This is the stamp set that I'm using. It's called Cling Stamp Phrases One by Tim Holtz. And it has all these great sentiments in here. And I'm gonna be using this big one right here. And I'm going to use my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I just have the 12 pack and that's worked quite well for me so far. And I'm going to use this dark green in here to make some stems for the flowers. Then I have these, they're actually considered uh, cabochons, but they've been used a lot lately in paper crafting for um, just adding some accents. I think Pretty Pink Posh sells these, so I will be linking those below um, in, the, in the blog post as well. So I'll be adding some of these, and I also have them in a larger size, which I'll be throwing these on too. So here's the bigger ones. And I actually got mine from overseas. It's a website called 8seasons.com, and it kind of only makes sense to purchase from them if you're going to be placing large orders. I originally started purchasing from them for resale, and um, I just kind of have held on to everything I've bought. So um, yeah, you might want to look into that website, 8seasons.com. They have a lot of really cool stuff. So. All right, let me start building this card. And I have laid it out previously and took a photo of it just to kind of know what I wanted to do. So it looks like I decided for the bigger one to be over here, the smaller one to be right about here, and then the leaves are gonna go on either side of those. So what I really wanna start off is by giving them some stems so it doesn't look like they're just floating in the air. So I'm going to pull this darkest green color out of here, which is called green. The other one's called light green. And just quickly draw some stems. Not really going crazy here with that. That should work. So I'm going to start off by getting some... Uh, I think I have glue dots maybe, which would work pretty well for adhering these chunky embellishments down. Yeah, I actually have some homemade glue dots. These are awesome to have around. I need to make some more. Um, if you're curious how to make these, you just buy Aileen's Tacket over and over and put it on some like sticker paper or parchment paper and just leave it there to dry and it works really good. So anyways, I'm going to, well, I need to put the leaf on the flower first, so we'll do that. Let's pick one of these up. So I made some big flat ones too. That's kind of the cool thing about making your own. You can decide if you want them to be big and flat, small and um dimensional it's kind of cool so I have that big leaf on there and now I'm going to get another one of these big flat ones and that should work and oops I picked one up with my thumb I'm just going to reference my earlier picture to see where I wanted the leaf going and it looks like I was going to have it kind of going that way. So that should work. I think I had it tucked in just a little bit more before. These are actually really strong. If you're curious. So I'm going to tuck it in just a little bit more. Hopefully that'll be okay. All right, and this is definitely a card that I will probably hand somebody in person because these are really dimensional. So you can see from the side. 
All right, and now I'm going to just actually accentuate this little stem that I drew. There we go. I don't want to flatten it too much, but I want it to look like it belongs there because the stem is not dimensional. I really wish I had like a paper stem now. <laughs> kind of wondering if I should do that. I could easily cut, um, actually I have some scraps here. I'm going to try that really quick just to maybe cut a paper stem. I just kind of feel like the inked one doesn't quite go with what I've already done and that paper would be better. So I'm going to try this and see. I can just color it with the zig marker. I'm going to move on to stamping my sentiment. So again, I have this set uh, called Clean Stamp Phases 1 by Tim Holtz. And I'm going to use the one that says, life doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. And that should just fit in nicely right there. And of course, I always forget to do this. It's a lot easier to stamp a sentiment if you don't have all this dimensional stuff on your card first. So I'm going to use this Fisker stamp press. It has these little spongy feet on them. And that should help me be able to kind of squish everything down and get a nice impression here. So I'm just going to pick that up. Does that look straight? Yeah, I think that looks pretty straight. So, looks like I should be able to squish the flowers and we'll be okay. And I'm going to use a new to me ink. I just bought it. It's called Versafine, which I'm sure a lot of you have already heard of. It's a black pigment ink and it's supposed to be great for fine details. It's by the company Sukuniku, who also makes Versamark. So that's why it's Versa something. And I'm gonna try this out. This will be my first time trying this ink pad. So it should be nice and juicy. It looks like it is. I only have one shot at this, so hopefully this comes out nice. Flip it over and try to get this straight. Use my grid here to kind of help me help myself. Good thing about something like this is you can get it down and then move your hand over to where your stamp is and kind of just rub it around and push it really good. So I think that should be good enough. And it was. That came out great. I love it. So I'm very happy with this ink so far. It got all those tiny little imperfections that a lot of Tim Holtz stamps have to give it that vintage look. You can see those all showed up perfectly, so that is awesome. Love it. Well, I will move on to the last part, which is the little clear stones. And I had previously taken a picture of how I wanted to place these because I always struggle with placement on those. Looks like I had two big and three little. Three little. Now to adhere these, I can't use a glue dot because that'll show up. I'm gonna have to use a clear liquid adhesive. And for that, um, I think, I don't know what. <laughs> so I put some glue in this syringe and I can't remember what on earth it was. But I think it might be, yeah, it's clogged. I think I put glossy accents in a syringe thinking that I was smart. <laughs> and it just completely clogged it. I think, oh, there we go. So it got stuck in that fine tip thing there, but I can still use it this way. So I'm going to do that. That should work. Okay. My phone keeps on timing out, so I keep losing my picture over here. Let's see. So I had one here, kind of off the edge. And then one right here. And then I had another one just barely off the edge over here. 
Maybe a little bit more in. And then one here and here. And I originally liked that placement and I think I'll leave it like that. I think it still looks good. So we'll go with that. And I'm going to try to use my little syringe here and uh, get these put on. I might use a pickup tool. I don't know how much that's gonna help me in this instance, but we'll give it a shot just to do surgery, I guess. Yeah, it looks like it'll work. Don't want to do too much. Might be able to suck some back in. I don't want it oozing out over. Yeah, that's cool. It'll let me suck it back in. So that's nice. Squeeze it down there. And I'll go back in later when they're dry and remove the uh, little white spots that the pickup tool leaves on it. These do add like a little bit of a magnification, so if there's something on your paper that you want to accentuate, you definitely could use it for that purpose. Awesome, that came out great. So I'm just going to put my thing back on here and basically use that as a cap. So cool, syringe ended up working out in the end. Awesome. All right, now I need to add these. So maybe I will, I have a little glue pen for that. So I'm going to use my quickie glue pen here. Love that for these smaller, really skinny things. Awesome. Yay. And this card is pretty much done. I just need to mount it on the back on the card base, which is really easy. And then clean up those little white dots that I made. Because let me show you here. If you get these dirty, it's making these. Come on, camera. Okay, it's making these shadows. You see that? There's like a little shadow there. And then there's a little shadow there. That's because it's dirty on top. So I will get my ATG gun here and just run some lines. Originally I was going to add some foil to this card because I've kind of been loving the foil lately. Uh, but <laughs> it was going to be on the edges. I was going to use tape and add foil to the edges. Well, I totally messed up when I was mounting the butterfly paper to this. It was actually going to be a smaller amount and it ended up being the size of the card base so I just said you know what whatever that's fine it might have been overdoing it anyways with all of the stuff that's going on with this card already so I figured that was okay I'm really happy with how this card came out to be honest because a lot of times I make stuff and don't really know where I'm going with it and yeah these flowers were actually originally intended for the foil and vellum card that I made and then that one went in a completely different direction so I needed to use them on something because I spent a ton of time making these flowers and this just popped into my head like this whole card just appeared out of nowhere <laughs> so pretty happy with how it came out I think it looks really fancy and elegant and just it has a nice saying on the front of it so I'm very happy with how that worked out and it has these really pretty sparkly flowers. I don't know if the sparkle is showing through that much, but it has a bunch of mica on them. So, and you'll see that earlier in the video when I made those. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I am going to end the video here now that my card is complete and I will see you guys very soon, hopefully for a Father's Day card. Thank you so much. Bye guys.